In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct this beautiful silver wire necklace that consists of interrelated circles and spirals. I call it the double spiral hoop necklace. And the idea for the piece actually came to me while I was reviewing my art history. I happened to be looking at Etruscan jewelry and wall paintings and while looking at the Etruscan art I saw an image of this shape in my imagination. I immediately went to my sketchbook and developed the idea into a drawing and then proceeded to build it. Examining the link closely, the link that's used to form the necklace, you'll notice that it consists of two parts and I call it the double spiral hoop we have the double spiral here and the hoop They're joined with an intervening link the coil that holds everything nicely in place and of course I added a bead to each one I think that is a nice accent having the bead the addition of the bead to end it I like to do this with all of my necklaces. I ended it with a different kind of a link. Here I used the figure eight. And on the other side, I have two figure eights. And attached to that is the hook. I do have a video out on how to make the clasp. And the clasp usually is a simple hook and eye combination that we see here. For the clasp, I used 18-gauge nickel silver wire. For the links themselves, I used 20-gauge, slightly thinner nickel silver wire. To construct this necklace, you're going to need to use a variety of tools. And they include a pair of side cutters, round-nose jewelry pliers, that will be used to construct the clasp and the figure eight. Your flat nose pliers. Your flat nose pliers will be used for the main work, especially the formation of the spirals. Our handmade tool. If you've watched my other videos you've seen me use this for the formation of the coils for this necklace the tool that you see here was used to construct the primary hoops that contain the spirals I also like to use a small bench anvil or a small usually six inch by six inch steel block and a leather mallet there is one more item that needs to be mentioned you should wear a pair of safety goggles when you're working with wire jewelry Let's begin the construction of this beautiful necklace. And for the purposes of this video, I've begun one with these glass beads. How do we begin? The link is going to require quite a bit of wire. Using my homemade coil tool that I introduced in a previous video, I'll create a number of coils that will be cut up into hoops. So how do I begin? Take my wire. This is 20 gauge nickel silver wire. I insert it into the hole that I drilled into this piece of copper tubing, which is a three quarter inch diameter piece of copper tubing and I put the yellow tape on it just to make it more comfortable to hold. With the wire inserted into that hole, I'm able to pull it 
as I wrap it around the pipe really tight. And that's good because at this stage of the game, I need a lot of coils to construct this necklace. So having wrapped the wire tightly around the pipe, I'll cut it off. How many loops around do we need to create one wire hoop with its appropriate spirals? To get the right amount of metal, this is how I count it out. One, two, three, four. I'm going to cut my wire right there. Now, notice what I have. I have a coil of wire that has two ends, one end there, one end there, and two complete loops in the center. I'll move my wire over and do the same thing again. One, two, three, four. Now I have enough to make two complete links. In addition to the wire needed to make the actual links, you're going to need to make coils that will be used to attach the links. Remember how we do that. I use the coil making tool that I made out of the tree branch. Insert my wire into it. And I know I've mentioned this a number of times. I actually like to bend the wire over a little bit as it passes through. Sort of holds it in place. Then I take my wire and wrap it around the nail. One, two, three, four, five wraps. Give it a little bit of space. Five wraps more. A little bit more space to separate the individual coils. Five wraps more. That's nice. Now I'll cut the excess. Bend that back up so I can remove it from my tool. My coils aren't tight yet, but I can correct that. Yeah, trim off that length. First thing I do is I separate the individual coils. Separating them makes trimming them down to the appropriate size easier. Okay. I have one coil. Very good. I just made three. What you might want to do at this stage of the game is cut a bunch of coils so you don't have to waste time stopping making the links and, uh, and making coils as you move along. Now, how do I compress them to make them nicer coils? Put them back on a nail. Then I take that dowel with the hole drilled. In it, you see me do this before. And I squeeze it, press into it. That'll tighten up the coils nicely. Now, when preparing the individual links, and I'm, I'm considering these as individual links, although they're rather elaborate links, but to prepare them, what I like to do is create a large spiral on the end of each cut length of wire. So, to form our first spiral, like we've done in many of the links that we've constructed, you turn and crimp the end of the wire and then grab it with your flat nose and begin to wind it in. Now, what I do is I give it five complete turns. 
What does that mean? Let's stop for a second. What that means is this. The larger spiral, when we're finished, if we count the lines that create the spiral, we can count one, two, three, four, five. And that's what I mean by five complete turns. To keep things uniform, notice that little loop there is pointing towards the edge of the link. That's how I do all of them. See? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, and it's pointing towards the outer wall of the link. So we have a ways to go with this one. We're at one, two, three. I am taking my time, getting a firm grip with the plier, making sure that it stays nice and round. I recommend when you make this piece, give your hands a break. You may get a callus over here. No need to rush this. I find with difficult links, it's better to make a few and stop. Resume later when you're giving your hand a, a, a bit of a rest. One. Let's do another one. Pinch the top. And start to turn it to make the spiral. One, two, three, four. One more time around. I grab it and turn it very close to where the plier is positioned. That seems to help. See? I do that with my thumb. Get a good tight grip. It's a slow go. Take your time. Don't be impatient. Good. Now... The first connection that I make is this right here. Notice how this attachment is different than all subsequent attachments. I just find it easier solution to position my first two like this and then add the remaining links on one side only. We have our figure eight links that make a nice clasp. We have the first two that create what looks like a center butterfly formation. And then every other link, it's only on one side. Until we come to the clasp. How do we go about making our very first link? The first thing we do is to position a coil onto this unit shape that will eventually become the link. Having positioned a coil, I place my beads. I'm going to get three beads. One. Come on, bead. All right, the beads are in place. When it's attached, I want the beads to fall down like that. What do we do next? We take the end and we move it over so we can slide the coil up over the end. We move it around until we're right about there. And now all I need to do is introduce my second spiral. And we'll have our first link. 
Take my pliers. I carefully crimp the tip of the wire. And I begin to spiral. Now, you have seen me do this in my spiral hoop earrings, so it's not a completely unfamiliar process. In fact, I think I would make, like to make a pair of spiral hoop earrings using these beads. That'll look very nice. All right, just about there. You have to play with it a bit. A little tweak here and there does help. But there we have it. The final thing I like to do after I create the initial link is I like to work it a bit with the leather mallet. That helps establish the roundness of the wire hoop and firms up the metal a bit. Using my leather mallet Move the beads out of the way, carefully position the link, and tap the edges a bit. I'm not going crazy hammering it. Even working the metal lightly like this helps us to stiffen the wire. Also, it enhances the basic shape of the circle. Now that we have a nicely formed first link, how do we go about attaching the remaining links? The first thing I need to do is take another length of wire with the spiral in place and insert the end of the wire into the coil. Of the link that I just completed. So it's going to go like that. I also intentionally inserted it so the large spirals are adjacent to one another. I want to create like a suggestion of a butterfly, which I think I'm going to turn into a, a pair of earrings, a butterfly pair of earrings. Butterfly link earrings, I like that. Okay, but what do we do next? You know, how do you deal with this wire being loose like that? Well, what I needed to do in this case was to insert it, that end, in again. Now, before I reinsert that into the coil, I place a coil onto the loose wire, like so. Next thing I do is I add my three beads. One. Three. Nice. Now I push that wire into and through the coil. And I will proceed to create the smaller spiral here and we have the beginning of our necklace using my flat nose pliers I pinch the tip of the wire and begin to spiral it nice it's on its way one final thing i like to do like you saw me do to the previous link is hammer it out a bit what i would like to show you next is how to add the third link to add the third link take the wire that i pre-prepared this is where I would like to start to alternate the position of the large spiral. So I'm going to insert it this way. 
And having done that, if I turn it around just to show you what the end result is going to be, the spiral will now be on top. So it's going to alternate from bottom to top, bottom to top, and so on. Having inserted the wire into the coil, I place three beads, and we need an additional coil. Now, after placing the three beads and the coil are to the wire loop, I insert that end into the coil that's attached to the other link. And if you notice, I'm ready to start winding that wire into a spiral. Because the beads are in place, they're facing the right direction, and the coil is in place to attach the next link. I comfortably hold my wire in place, grab it with the flat nose plier, crimp the top, and begin to turn. Good. Nice little spiral over there. Sometimes you need to do additional bending just to get everything to line up properly. See how that's going? It's going to be real nice. I think what I'd like to do at this juncture is simply attach one more link, providing you with a really clear idea of how to proceed. And we'll come back to add the clasp. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And the outer wall makes a six. I take what I just made and I thread this end into the existing coil. And I'm threaded it in in such a way that now my spiral faces down rather than up. Remember, I want to alternate the design of the spirals. Having done that, I need to add the beads and the next coil. I study the position of the beads to make sure they're positioned in the right place when I add them. What does that mean? The beads need to be on the bottom of the link. In order to achieve that, first I need to add my coil. I'm glad I made a bunch so they're ready to go. I add the coil. Next, I add my three beads. Having positioned the, the coil and the three beads, if everything is in the right order, now I should be able to take the remaining open end of the wire hoop, insert it into the coil that's attached to the other link, work it through and good everything is in place now I'll take my flat nose pinch the top and turn it really looking at what I'm doing it is difficult to achieve nice round spirals, so you have to remain focused on what you're doing. It's
It's coming together. I'm happy with that. Now what I'll do is turn off the camera, continue to work with it, develop it into a nice necklace. The finished spiral hoop necklace. With the clasp attached. The clasp is a combination of the hook and eye. Please watch my detailed video on how to construct this clasp. Had lots of fun making the video. Thanks for watching.